Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Today we are going to be diving into a topic uh, and that is on packed red blood cell transfusions or PRBC transfusions. Specifically when and what it means to have irradiated PRBCs or washed PRBCs. So we're going to dive into what these two things mean, how it's done, and when we should think about doing them in the clinical arena. For those of you new to the channel, this is the channel of Whiteboard Medicine. We are a medical education and kind of public health news channel. This is our homepage. Um, definitely, if you are new to the channel, check out the page. Check out all the playlists that we have. We'll link some pertinent ones in the video description. We also have a high-yield Patreon page that we also have linked in the video description where we post... All sorts of articles and, uh, you know, medical education musings, practice questions, video notes, and more. So if you want the video notes from this video and or the questions, uh, definitely check out that Patreon page. No further ado, quick 30-second break for the introduction. Don't go anywhere. Right after, we'll dive into the video. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's going to be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety. All right, thanks for sticking around. So irradiated versus washed red blood cells. A little bit of background to start. There are actually almost 1 or 11 million blood transfusions per year in the USA alone. All right, so this is something that happens tons and tons and tons of time every single day. All right, and a red blood cell transfusion is, as many of you know, if you have low red blood cells, low hemoglobin, and or you're bleeding, and or there's different kind of clinical scenarios going on, uh, your um, uh, healthcare clinician may order a transfusion of packed red blood cells, PRBCs, which equals packed red blood cells. We put this little vid uh, picture to the right so you could actually see what it looks like if you people have never seen them. It's literally a package, right? And this package is full of red blood cells. Now this is supposed to just contain red blood cells as well as citrate and some other things in there to kind of keep the blood cells fresh. But what can happen is no matter how much you kind of try to purify this, there are other things that get in there, right? There's kind of proteins, there's immunoglobulins, right? Like antibodies from the donor. Um, some white blood cells can often sneak in there, which can be pertinent. Um, very rarely, some bacteria or viruses can get in there. This is very rare. These are kind of purified and sterilized. Um, but it is possible um, that there can be some viruses and bacteria that can get in there. So the question then becomes, well, in certain patients with certain risks, are there ways we can further optimize the packed red blood cell transfusion, such as irradiating or washing them? And this is when we get into the different indications for irradiation and washing. So for the run-of-mill person, um, let's say, you know, this person uh, on the other end of the microphone here, you know, I don't have any significant medical history. If I were to, you know, unfortunately need a blood transfusion, let's say I had a motor vehicle accident and I have some bleeding from a liver laceration, I could just get a normal blood cell transfusion. I don't need irradiated blood. I don't need washed blood blood. Um, I don't need anything, you know, quote unquote fancy um, like that. But for certain patients who have certain comorbidities, they're immunosuppressed, they have immunodeficiencies, they have malignancies on chemotherapy, they have a history of transfusion reactions or IgA deficiency, um, or they've been kind of alloimmunized in the past, or maybe they're, you know, getting queued up for an organ transplant. All these patients um, have certain risk factors that favor requiring additional treatment of those packed red blood cells, such as irradiating them or washing them before they are transfused. So starting with irradiation, what's actually happening here is that package of red blood cells, you know, this package here, it actually is exposed to kind of low dose radiation. And radiation obviously is a word that sometimes evokes a, a degree of concern, uh, quote unquote scariness, we suppose. Um, but this is a really low dose of radiation and this low dose of radiation is very well calibrated um, to be a certain caliber that simply kills or eliminates so it kills or eliminates the ability of nucleated cells to reproduce. So what does this mean? Well, remember what we said. Sometimes there can be white blood cells, WBCs, 
in packed red blood cells that sneak in there, right? When you are donating blood, they're taking whole blood and they, you know, sterilize and um, kind of filter out different parts of that blood into plasma, right? Fresh frozen plasma, FFP, um, into PRBCs, packed red blood cells. And all this is kind of a distillation where they're taking that whole blood that you donated and they are kind of distilling out different components. But that is not a perfect process, right? So sometimes white blood cells can sneak into the packed red blood cells. If you irradiate those packed red blood cells, it will either kill or essentially make it so these white blood cells can't reproduce, right? Because it's a little radiation. It hits kind of these, um, we say nucleated cells, so cells with a nucleus. Red blood cells do not have a nucleus, right? They don't kind of repro uh, replicate and divide on their own, whereas white blood cells do. All right, bacteria have a nucleus. Um, so if any bacteria snuck in there, irradiation will either kill or make it those, so those bacteria can't reproduce. So what radiation does is it takes the packed red blood cells and it says, hey, if there are any other nucleated cells in here, if goodness forbid any bacteria snuck in here, the radiation will kill or essentially um, disable these cells so that they can't reproduce in the body. So now let's think about why that would be important, who that would be important for. Will be important for patients who didn't have their own immune system. Because if a white blood cell, all right, let's just draw kind of a white blood cell was sitting in here with your packed red blood cells. If this white blood cell was uh, transfused into a patient who had no immune system, this white blood cell would replicate, right? It would replicate into, you know, let's just make up a number here. This is just made up into, let's say, 100 more white blood cells that all got into that patient's body. And as those white blood cells replicated, they're not the patient's white blood cells. So they can actually attack the patient and cause something called graft versus host disease, which is when the graft, the uh, donor or the transfused white blood cells replicates and it starts to attack the host, graft versus host disease. And it can cause really, really significant illness. So anyone who does not have their own functional immune system can sometimes be at risk for graft versus host disease if you do not irradiate those red blood cells and if some white blood cells from the person who donated that blood get into the person you're transfusing blood into, the host. So people who are at risk for that, people who got stem cell transplants, right? Those who maybe had a blood cancer and had to get a stem cell transplant to replenish their bone marrow um, because those patients are, can be very immunosuppressed. There can be times where they have almost no immune system when they're getting induced or first having their stem cell transplant um, and they're really high risk for graft versus host disease. Those with congenital T-cell immunodeficiency, right? This essentially means that that patient does not have functional T-cells. They don't have their own functional immune system because if you have your own functional immune system and if some white blood cells sneak in when you're getting them transfused, your own immune system will just go and kill that white blood cell. You know, you won't even notice it. If I got a, a transfusion of packed red blood cells and there is some white blood cells in that package of PRBCs, my immune system would just go kill those white blood cells. I wouldn't even notice it. It would be no big deal. But if you don't have that immune system to kill those white blood cells and those white blood cells can replicate, they then can attack your body because they don't recognize it because they're not from you. They're from someone else. Other patients, right, who very, are very immunosuppressed are those with some hematologic malignancies on aggressive chemotherapy, right? So acute leukemias on aggressive chemotherapy, um, lymphomas, all those can be at risk if you don't irradiate those packed red blood cells. And then really any pa cancer patient on aggressive chemotherapy, you don't always irradiate the PRBCs for any cancer patient, but sometimes you do, right? Just depending on what's going on. If they're on really aggressive chemotherapy and you're really worried that they have no kind of... Um, uh, immune system that's functional. Maybe they're neutropenic, so they don't have any neutrophils when you send their complete blood counts with the differential, and they come back neutropenic. Um, those would be patients who'd be at risk if you didn't irradiate it, right? The much less common thing is if some bacteria snuck in there. Um, obviously, irradiation will take care of those bacteria because if you're super immunodeficient, um, getting bacteria into your blood can be really life-threatening. So in a patients who do not have functional immune system, stem cell trans. Uh, uh, recipients, those with congenital immunodeficiencies, hematologic malignancies on chemo, any cancer patient on aggressive chemo, consider irradiating those packed red blood cells, which is usually just a button that you click on the transfusion order, and then the uh, blood bank will irradiate them, expose those red blood cells to low-dose radiation, okay? And then after that, it will kind of kill or disable any white blood cells, any bacteria in that package of red blood cells to then make it safer to 
transfuse into these patients. Okay, what about washing? Right? So another option when you're ordering a blood transfusion is should you wash the red blood cells? And what this is doing, it's literally washing the red blood cells in sterile saline. So it's taking those PRBCs and it's kind of just re-washing them really thoroughly to remove any excess proteins, immunoglobulins, and also potassium too, okay? Because this is a package of red blood cells, but again, it came from someone who donated whole blood. And as we talked about, they take that whole blood and they kind of distill out what they need, but something sneak through, right? Proteins, immunoglobulins from the donor, um, and over time, the packed red blood cells can build up a little bit of potassium, right? Because a lot of cells inside the cells, there's a lot of intracellular potassium. And as some of those cells die, that intracellular potassium will leak out and can cause some degree of higher potassium in that transfusion. So then they wash all this really good right before they give it to the patient. Um, and that removes some of the excess proteins, immunoglobulins, and potassium. So let's think about who this would be helpful for, right? Who would not want or like having, you know, kind of excess proteins, immunoglobulins. Um, that would be patients who have reactions to those things. So some patients who have had recurrent severe transfusion allergies, you get a blood transfusion, and even though it's a good match, a good ABO match, you still have an allergic reaction to it. That means you could be allergic to some of the proteins or some of the immunoglobulins that are left in the packed red blood cells, and washing all those out may decrease your risk of severe transfusion allergies to those PRBCs. We're going to skip this one and come back to it. Also, those with IgA deficiency who've had a reaction to blood in the past. So some people have a congenital IgA deficiency. IgA is an immunoglobulin, right? These are antibodies. It's a certain type of antibody. And our body tends to produce an immune response to proteins we don't have. So if you have an IgA deficiency, there's a chance your body, because you have no IgA in your own body, has an immune response um, to IgA immunoglobulin. So if you were to get IgA immunoglobulin, your body would respond to that IgA immunoglobulin and attack it as if it's a foreign invader and cause a reaction. Whereas people who don't have this deficiency, our body doesn't have that same response to IgA because we have it in our own body. So our body's like, oh no, that's a normal protein. We're not going to attack it. So if you have IgA deficiency, sometimes IgA immunoglobulins can be in the packed red blood cells, right? So if you wash them really well, you can get rid of those IgA immunoglobulins so that when you transfuse it, there's not IgA floating around in there for someone to react to, okay? Preventing allo immuniz uh, immunization. Um, so this essentially means people who get blood transfusions over time will develop some degree of immune response to kind of the different proteins and immunoglobulins in the packed red blood cells, right? Let's just make up a scenario. Let's say that packed red blood cells have protein X. And I, remember I got in that motor vehicle accident um, and bled and I got a bunch of blood transfusions. My body is being like, oh, what's protein X? I don't know what that is. I'm going to form a, an immune response to protein X right? And I'm going to produce all these antibodies against protein X. If in the future I got in another car accident and had to get blood transfusions, and for the record, I have not been in a car accident, nor did we need to get blood transfusions. But um, if I had, and then in the future I needed a blood transfusion again, and that blood had protein X in it again, my body already has an immune response circulating to protein X. So my body would attack protein X and cause a transfusion reaction. Over time, think about that multiplied, you know, unfortunately, some people need lots of blood transfusions, right? Now we got protein X, we got protein Y, protein Z, A, B, you know, make up whatever number you want. And you start to get immunized to all these different proteins that can float around in packed red blood cells. So then it's harder and harder and harder to get blood transfusions. And then if in the future, that person needed something like an organ transplant, it can be hard to then get an organ transplant because it's hard to get all of those things out of that organ before they transplant it in you so you can have more reactions to organ transplants. So preventing kind of allo immunization is important and washing away all those proteins before the blood is transfused can help do that. 
And then the last thing, which is more pertinent in kind of neonates and pediatric patients, is washing it. The blood can lower the potassium load, right? We said over time, these red blood cells kind of break down while they're waiting to get transfused, and they cause potassium to leak out, and that potassium can build up. And in neonates, in adults, this is really much less pertinent. Uh, in fact, we haven't ever had to do this for high potassium. Um, but neonates, that can be significant. So sometimes washing out that potassium before you give the transfusion can help um, little kiddos uh, not build up excess potassium in their blood, which can be life-threatening. So then the question becomes, why don't we just irradiate and wash all blood, right? Well, irradiation and washing does cause some kind of loss of the red blood cell load. There's some destruction and injury to red blood cells. So when you transfuse, you'd have less red blood cells that were functional in the blood you're getting transfused. It also takes a lot of time. So if someone needs blood kind of emergently, this can take a lot of time to do. Um, and sometimes people need blood right then and there, and if they don't get it, something bad can happen. Um, so there are some issues with this. There's a few other things, but these are kind of the big ones that can break down some red blood cells. And let's just, you know, we're just kind of making up, let's say it decreases the red blood cell load by 10%. 10 to 20% less red blood cells in each transfusion. And this is a limited resource, right? People have to donate the blood. Um, and we're always you know, talking about blood shortages. So decreasing the amount of red blood cells in each transfusion unit on kind of a population scale would be really significant. Um, and then the time can lead to significant delays because this obviously takes time to do. The blood bank has to physically do this thing each time. All right, hopefully that was interesting, helpful, educational. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Um, check out our page, subscribe, hit the bell button. Uh, in this video's description, you can check out other playlists or our Patreon page. We'd love to have you. Um, hope everyone's having a good day. In any case, stay well, keep learning. We'll see you all next time.